This next question was sent to cornydrivethru at gmail.com from Fausty Walnuts in San Jose, California. <laughs> On a recent podcast. Hey, I've, I've heard, by the way, those are some of the finest walnuts in, in San Jose. On a recent podcast. Brian, let me ask you this. You know what you, you know what you got when you got nuts on the wall? What's that? Walnuts. You know what you got when you got nuts on your chest? Chestnuts. Chestnuts. You know what you got when you got nuts on your chin? No, I do not. A dick in your mouth. Go ahead. On a recent podcast. Hey, yeah, let me ask you this. You know what you you know what you call a guy with no arms and no legs sitting on the porch? Matt. You know what you call a guy with no arms and no legs hanging on the wall? Art, you know what you call a guy with no arms and no legs in a bathtub? Bob. This is awful. You know, you, know I, what you, you know what you call a dog with no legs? It don't matter. He won't come anyway. I will add this one. It is a Jackie Martling choke I heard years ago. And your humor there reminded me of it. What do you say to a woman with no arms? I don't know. Nice tits. <laughs> But let's get through this question. Sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from Fausty Walnuts in San Jose, California. On a recent podcast, Vince Russo was discussing February 1997. I'm sure he was. And getting more involved working with you and Bruce Pritchard on creative. Yeah, that's about the time it happened. He went on a five minute rant questioning the credibility of the stories Bruce tells due to his history of alcohol and pills. <laughs> God damn it. He even says, quote, Bruce would tell me during the height of WrestleMania, he would tell me stories of him and freaking Vince snorting cocaine in the back of the limousine. I've heard what? I've heard stories of Vince having bottles of wine on his private jet. But did you ever do or witness Vince McMahon doing rails of coke in the back of his limo? No. And not only that. <laughs> But I've known Bruce Pritchard about 15 years longer than Shitstain has known him. And Bruce never told me he was in the back of a limo with fucking Vince McMahon doing lines of coke either. And we spent a lot of time together, just like, as a matter of fact, I spent more one-on-one -on -one time with Bruce Pritchard. That almost sounds dirty now. Than, than Shitstain did, because... When I was working with Bruce was the period of time where we would most of the time spend the day at his house playing with his dog, acting like we were working if the office called. And then once a week, we'd go to Vince's where he'd tell us what we were supposed to write. And then that did not come up. He, he did share with me that he had done other substances with other talent, which is not germane to this particular point. So we will not give those names. but. None of them were Vince McMahon. So here's another thing. Yes, Bruce has mentioned that he has done some substances in the past, but I don't say that he's making up stories or can't remember the stories because of his substance use. I just say that sometimes he makes up stories because they sound better, at least to him, than the actual stories the way they happened. But... Uh, Shitstain's one to talk about somebody not being able to, to tell their stories right when his change constantly, at least Bruce's bullshit's fairly consistent. But Shitstain's changes depending on his audience or the way the story was received the last time he told it. He tweaks things so, so often to, to make himself sound better. But no, I, I, I believe because it's true, Vince drunk in the fucking bar and give, the guys giving him their finishes and the fucking plane ride stories and, and the other stuff. But no, just as a statement, I guess Bruce just liked shit stain a lot more than me because all that time that we were alone together, he never confided in me that he used to do lines of cocaine with Vince McMahon in his limousine. Not to say Vince McMahon has never done cocaine. I didn't, I, I have no knowledge that he ever has, but I didn't say that. I didn't make that blanket statement. I said, if, if he and Bruce did it, I never heard about it. And I don't know why I wouldn't have heard about it if Shitstain did hear about it because he wasn't around when it was happening either. You know, there are 
pretty famous stories about Vince getting drunk a couple times with the boys and taking the doomsday device in a bar and taking and see and and see that's by the way by the time that i got around and especially 96 when i was up there and and on a regular basis around him that that was a mostly a thing of the past also until they started getting their own plane where they could act up and not be in public but i didn't get to witness all of that activity by Vince either. He was fairly straight laced at that point. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. And you say fairly straight laced. Did you ever see Vince drunk? No, never once. No. All right. I mean, that's a, that's a blanket statement. I'd, I'm trying to remember in that period of time. I mean, you know, when I didn't go and sit at the goddamn hotel bar till it closed, like a bunch of the guys, cause they're fucking bored or whatever. I was happy. Once I got out of TVs or wherever to go to my room, get a pizza, watch some TV and possibly have some company, but I was not a social butterfly, but in, in working with Vince in, in being at Vince's house on the days we worked there in driving three and four hour trips from one place to another in the car with Vince, where we'd leave at, you know, nine o'clock in the morning and get to the TV at noon and leave at, at, almost midnight and get back to the hotel at two o'clock in the morning or whatever the fuck. I don't remember seeing him drink alcohol. Uh, maybe a cocktail, two cocktails. If we went to like the steakhouse, or what was it a Smith and Walensky's that he liked to go to in uh, New York or a fancy dinner at a steak place like that something like that. He might have a drink. I can't remember specifically that I saw him do it, but I'm not going to deny that he did do it, but I've never seen Vince McMahon drunk. I've never seen Vince McMahon either. I don't know that I ever saw him take a, well, not saw him take a pill, but was around him after he had taken a pill of any kind. I wasn't around him during his surgery. He had the quads reattached or whatever. I'm sure he might've taken some pain medication. But it's not like he just said, wow, boy, I just had that Vicodin and I'm fucking loopy or anything like that. It's just, no. Uh, the, the, the drunk in the bar wanting to be one of the boys, Vince, probably mostly ended in that era with the steroid trials. And then whatever he was doing when they all got to be billionaires and got their own plane, I have no idea. I had escaped the asylum by then. These stories about Vince being able to work on no sleep and everyone says, oh, he's like a robot or an android or a monster. How's he doing this? Do you think it's the cocaine? <laughs> no. Again, no. It's just he he's miserable if he can't work and he doesn't like to sleep because it keeps him from working. Uh, We'd go in there on a Wednesday. We're supposed to get there at nine o'clock in the morning, right? Well, that's a fucking two-hour drive from where we lived, me and Bruce, in those days. So we're in the car at 7 o'clock, but we got up at 6.30 and fucking jumped in the car to go down there and, and hopefully not be late. We'd come in. Vince has already been up. He's already had his coffee. He's already had his workout in his home gym. He's already got the paperwork spread out on the fucking dining room table. And if you are late... Even though he's lived there for 20 years and he knows very well that it can take you two hours to go 30 miles in that fucking shithole, he looks down his fucking reading glasses at you and looks at his watch like, what time is it, pal? A lot of traffic? Like that? He, he was always, and he never, he never wanted to get rid of us. He would not let us leave. At <laughs> 7 o'clock that night would come around. It'd be dark, depending on what time of year it was. And we're still talking about this horse shit. What's Mark Merrow going to do about whatever? And I'm going to tear my hair out of my fucking head. And it, he would never want you to leave. And if, all right, I guess that's it. Good place to stop. Finally, you get the fuck out of there. And then he'll go and fucking do more shit. So, and, and it's not like he wasn't at, at, at his office 12 hours a day when he was in Stamford, if he was on the road, he's got his book out. There was two reasons he never drove. Number one, because nobody wanted to ride with him driving because he's crazy. And number two, that way he can sit in the front seat in the passenger seat with his book out and fucking book. 
or talk about booking. So uh, I no, I uh, he's just that's him, and he had the famous quote, and it's true. Unfortunately, he said he uh, I can't remember what interview or publication it was, but he said, "When I die, I will die." a very frustrated man because there's so much left to do. I'm, I'm just going to say, check with me when I'm a fucking billionaire and see if my fat ass wants to do anything. Did you ever see Vince eat any magic spoon? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but I'll tell you what, I've seen Vince attacks food. I will say this and then we will talk about the wonderful people at Magic Spoon. He doesn't want to enjoy it. He wants to get it over with, right? Even if it's a nice steak dinner, he'll go to the best steakhouse in New York, but he takes big bites and he barely chews. When we would go down to the down the road to the little lunch place, a little like a deli and, and a little store down the road from his palatial estate for lunch when we were over there, he would always get the same thing a fucking turkey sandwich with light mustard, just a giant thick, one of those east northeast deli, giant thick two-inch turkey sandwiches with a little mayonnaise, and he would eat the thing in five bites while he's looking at his book at the fucking dining room table. It's fuel to him. He doesn't want to enjoy it. He he needs it. He needs the intake for his muscle building, but otherwise he wants to get the process over because it keeps him from fucking working with both hands. But folks, I tell you what, I hope that none of you rush through eating the magic spoon because it is the best. You should savor this. You're going to Flavor Town. You're living in Ecstasyville. Your mouth will love you forever. Your mouth will kiss you. We're eating Magic Spoon cereal, and I got some big news, Brian. This is something we have not said on the show so far. We're breaking this now. For a limited time only, this month, Magic Spoon releases two amazing new flavors. Are you ready for them, Brian? I'm ready, and so is Vince. Cookies and cream and maple waffle. Oh, I love cookies and cream. That's right Oh, down but my maple alley. waffle. Come cookies on. and oh, cream. My God. Cookies and All cream. Right. We're going to fight here. Folks, <laughs> whether it's the comforting, indulgent combination of cookies and cream or maple waffle, I don't know what to tell you. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein in every serving, only four net grams of carbs in each serving, 140 calories a serving. But it's the best cereal on earth. It's not crap food with sugar. And carbs, it'll rot your teeth and make your spleen turn green. This is good stuff, but it tastes great. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. And we found out what GMOs are. Genetically modified organisms. And we don't want that shit. You're not going to get any in Magic Spoon. Whether it's the Existing cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, or cinnamon, or the new limited time only cookies and cream or maple waffle, you got to get some Magic Spoon. And if you're in Canada, they're shipping there now too. So go to magicspoon.com slash gym to grab the new limited edition cookies and cream or maple waffle or get a custom bundle of cereal. Try it today. Use the promo code GYM at checkout, save $5 off your order. This offer is now good anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, but only when you use the code JIM at checkout at magicspoon.com. And of course, they got the 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it, and what a low-class person you would be, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. But who doesn't like the Magic Spoon? Only a low-class individual. A low-class individual. 